This is the Lego Peugeot 9X8 Le Mans hypercar, and it is fabulous. So let's check it out. Now, I realize I'm about six months late to this game. This thing's been out for a while, but I just need to tell more people about it, because if you don't already know, it's amazing. I'm gonna see how fast I can get through this quick little history lesson. Peugeot 9X8 is a Le Mans hypercar. It is the top class that performs in the World Endurance Championship, the WEC. And the interesting thing about that class is they're very restrictive on power, but when it comes to aerodynamics, they're very open and each manufacturer can do whatever they want. And 99.99% of the time, that results in a car that looks very same-ish, looks like an LMP1, it's got a massive wing in the back. The Peugeot 9X8 was special. It had no rear wing, it had enough downforce, but it made it very uncompetitive. The drivers felt they didn't have confidence in the vehicle to push it to its limits, allegedly. Some people uh, compared it to the Mercedes CLR. Here we go. Oh my God, oh my God, the Mercedes. Luckily, this one did not do that, but this ran for 2023 only without the rear wing. And in 2024, it is getting a wing to look more like its standard counterparts. That is, I think, what makes this partly such a special Lego set. It's very unique. It only happened for one year and it's never coming back again the way that it was. And we got it in its most unique form, and I think that's really special. Build-wise, for the first two bags, nothing too crazy happens. You're just building the chassis and drivetrain. You do get the new heavy-duty suspension, which is used in a really clever couple of ways in this car to get some very low-profile, stiff suspension. It's kind of like a pushrod style but each side of the car is sharing basically half of the suspension. It's really interesting actually, and I highly recommend at least checking it out. But once you move on to bags three, four, and five, things start to get really interesting with the cabin in bag three, and you're building that alongside these very cool butterfly opening doors. And then bags four and five, you make some really interesting body work and they get some really nice angles in here. Uh, there's, I couldn't even capture it on camera. There's such a subtle angle to the rear and it's absolutely incredible. Everything fits together seamlessly. The build of the front with the lights, the way they came together, everything is just absolutely magnificent. It's so good. Uh, function wise, as I mentioned, it's got fully independent, very stiff suspension. It's very low profile. It looks very nice. It has steering via hand of God or steering wheel, which is kind of cool. You can remove the rear engine cover completely. I actually really like that it just comes off easily like that one. I don't think it has to be anything fancy. I think that works perfectly well. I like it a lot. You get to see uh, the rear diff and the engine. You get to see the exhaust as well with the twin turbo. It's very nice. And as I mentioned, the doors open and you can also open the front. And that's basically it. That is it for the functions, but I mean, what else do you really need? Maybe a little bit of like some active arrow or something would've been cool, but I'm not even sure if the real car has that. So if not, I mean, it's fine. Now I'm gonna get rid of a couple of the negatives really quick because there aren't too many, but one thing, there is a lot of stickers in this set. I didn't realize looking at it, this is a ton of, there's a ton of stickers. There is no printed parts. Everything with a pattern is a sticker and there are a lot of patterns. Also on the box, you may have seen the headlights are glow in the dark, but the Lego glow in the dark bricks suck. <laughs> so it's such a gimmick and it like does not work at all. And I know what I mentioned about light kits in my last video, but I think if this had like a properly installed light kit and there's so many places to hide wires in a car like this, it would look probably very, very good. But all the ones I saw had like neon underglow, like this isn't too fast, too furious. Just, <laughs> I just want headlights and taillights and that's literally it. I don't want anything else. I don't need lime green under the whole car. Like it's ridiculous. Anyway, 
I digress. But the good, as I said, the build was really nice, especially when you got towards the end, there's some really cool structures that come together. Everything functions as it should. I think it looks very faithful to the source material. And like I mentioned, I just think it's such a cool, unique, piece of endurance racing history and one that we're not likely to see again for a long time so i think it's awesome and i love it um even though it did terribly it's currently my favorite le mans hypercar um yeah i just i love it a lot i think it's really cool and uh, lego did an awesome job designing the set i'm so glad to have another uh, 24 hour endurance car in a large scale speed champions are great and all but I like these so much more than I like the GT3 class like the Porsche 911 RSR and that Ferrari sticker bomb nightmare thing that they got overall I think this set is amazing um, I highly recommend it I know it's a it's admittedly rather pricey uh, but I still did really really love it and I knew right from the moment that it was released that it was something that I very desperately wanted. And I'm so happy to have it. I love it a lot. Let me know what you think about this set or this car in general. Are you interested in it like I am? Would love to get your thoughts and comments. Let me know down below. Did you enjoy my history lesson or did you find it to be a bit long-winded and unnecessary? Story of my life. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will catch you again in the next one. Bye-bye.